As Sadiq Khan continues to deal with the ULES backlash in London, the SNP and Humza Yusuf are making things much worse for people in Scotland. And in this video, we're going to be comparing the different net zero measures in different parts of the country. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 2CTV, the channel that challenges the mainstream media and the political establishment from the left wing nutters to the globalist elite. So we have so much to talk to you guys about today. It's Monday, 4th of September, which means it's the first day, first parliamentary day since uh, the summer recess. So school day started, everybody's back in parliament in Westminster and already it's only the first day we've had so much chaos. So this channel will be covering all that over the next few days because it's going to be too much for today to handle. But let's talk about what's going on with ULES and generally clean air zone policies across the country. So we've been reporting on this stuff uh, on this channel and a lot of people thought, well, this is just a London issue, ultra low emission zone. It's very London centric. Why do we care about Sadiq Khan? Because it's not just about London, is it? These policies are being spread around like a virus from the, the Birmingham's clean air zones to Glasgow's LES or the low uh, emission zones. And uh, I don't know why they came up with his name, <laughs> LES. But all this stuff is going on. And Sadiq Khan is still dealing with the backlash, as he goes, no. This idiot, Humza Useless, and his party, with the coalition, but with their partners, the Scottish Green Party, are doing things similar but much worse and we've already been reporting on what's happened in Glasgow and how the whole policy in the name of clean air was actually unnecessary in Glasgow. Things were relatively uh, clean in certain areas that they were trying to target and the moment they introduced the policy and caused more traffic in other parts they just moved the air pollution to a different part of Glasgow. It just makes no sense apart from obviously all the money that they are raising for the authorities. Cash cow, as usual. This is the low emission zones in Glasgow, or as we said, LES. <laughs> Humza Yusuf's LES policy. Now, this is actually quite fascinating because um, all the criticisms that the city Khan is receiving because of his £12.50 uh, a day charge, which is quite a lot actually, if you think about it, if you are forced to pay £12.50 every single time. On top of that, you have to pay congestion charge. On top of that, uh, the actual tax on the car and parking charges, everything that you have. Basically, the moment you leave your house in this country, you breathe, you have to pay taxes. So, we have now a massive backlash. Uh, this is uh, Sandy Eastdale, who's uh, the co-founder of uh, McGill's, one of the largest independent um, bus company uh, in the country. And Sandy and his team, they've been trying to be relatively <laughs> environmentalists and they try to go along with uh, improving the buses and everything else. But even these guys have said it's going too far and it's not sustainable, especially the policy in Glasgow. Sandy said the normal working people in London are feeling ULES because the mayor, Sadiq Khan, has put it out too far. But people are moaning in London. But... It's quite soft, ULES, compared to what we have in Scotland, in Glasgow. Now, not to obviously downplay Sadiq Khan's ULES expansion, absolutely not. But the reason that Sandy is right is because if you compare the bad situation in London to the situation in Glasgow, you will be shocked. Now, if you haven't seen the reports we've already done on this channel before, Let's do a comparison between these policies across the country. First, let's actually talk about London and Glasgow. London, top of the page, right? £12.50 a charge a day. Glasgow, £60 fine. And if you don't pay that £60 fine on day one, after receiving it, then it will go up. Double, triple and everything else. You could pay hundreds and hundreds of pounds in Glasgow. Same applies to Edinburgh and other places that are introducing in Dundee and Aberdeen. But th these policies exist in various places, as you can see on the map. You have the Birmingham Clean Air Zones, eight pounds, which uh, that was there was also a backlash there because a lot of people refused to pay the fine, and the local council had to basically write off a lot of that debt. We got Bristol's nine pounds, Bath nine pounds, Bradford same thing, Portsmouth is ten pounds, Newcastle's twelve pound fifty again, and Oxford is at ten pounds. Now even the the Socialist Republic of Oxfordshire. Even they are cheaper 
than Newcastle. What is going on in Newcastle? I <laughs> Do you think things are bad? In London, look at what's going on across the country. In Glasgow, you will pay £60 a fine. And on top of that, if you, if you are late, the payment, you will be pay paying hundreds and hundreds of pounds in penalty. Um, Sandy Isdell said, if you look at the, the green policies, um, it's coffee shop politics by people sat in the west end of Glasgow with people's utility bills and mortgages going through the roof. They need to rein some of it in. Green policies seem to be taking over. Politics are taking over. Absolutely spot on. Now, Glasgow was the first Scottish city to introduce the clean air zone. Dundee um, will be introducing one in at the end of May 2024. And Aberdeenshire and Edinburgh will obviously also follow at the same time, as we said earlier on the map. That will be the price list that we showed you just earlier. A total of uh, 299 of Glasgow's streets are within the per perimeters. And of course, with the number plate recognition cameras installed and the police and everything else, they will be checking exactly who you are, where you're going, when you are going. So this is just the beginning of what they actually want to do when it comes to authoritarianism. This is not really the end goal. Just having a two pound, twelve pound fifty, or sixty pounds, or whatever. No, no, no. It's just going to get much worse unless we stop saying. We start saying no. If we keep moaning without doing anything about it, then nothing is going to change. Now, in Scotland, the transport spokesperson came out and said, <laughs> "We have supported McGill's, uh, the, the bus company, who have been moaning about this, with over two pound five million pounds through our bus emission." But hang on, hang on, hang on. They are now saying they've been helping is private independent company using Scottish taxpayers' money so that the bus company doesn't have to pay that much money. So they use taxpayers' money to improve the buses <laughs> so that they could say, hey, we are helping people in Scotland. Do you know what they're going to do now, right? It's, it's kind of obvious. Now they say, in addition, we have awarded close to £20 million to McGill's through the Scottish Zero Emission Bus Challenge Fund and Scottish Ultra Low Emission Bus Scheme. Oh, these are so long. To help with the company uh, with the transition to a greener fleet, benefiting their staff, customers and communities, apart from the taxpayers and the customers and the communities. Now, you use taxpayers' money for that. Wow. Secondly, all these names and schemes you're coming up with, the programs, they, each one of them have about 13 words in it. You need to shorten that. Thirdly, while you're at it, cancel each program because it's nonsensical and stop using taxpayers' money to make, uh, to make yourself feel better. So none of this is going to actually do anything with the environment. We know that because the reports have already came at the Imperial College and many other places that they don't really have any impact, a positive impact. It has a negative impact on the economy, on people's pockets and everything else and civil rights. But nobody cares in the establishment. Anyway, we'll, we'll keep you guys posted on what's going on in Glasgow, as usual, and obviously other places in the country. If you have any specific stories from your area, feel free to send us an email. It's in the description. I'm Maya Tutti, and we are the media.